Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to breed and keep your snails. Uh, in this particular video, I'm gonna talk about ram's horn snail, uh, just like the one that you see right now on your screen. I've had this guy for about, I guess, about a year, uh, and it's about half an inch of a size. It's not too big or too small. But uh, yeah, so uh, if you have a tank with a lot of allergies and whatnot, for example, you can't quite see well in this tank, uh, but this side of the fish tank is actually covered in algae and I'm growing this algae on purpose by having this light lamp hit right directly into the tank, just like that. So uh, this side of the glass is filled with algae as well as the one on the back. So if you look at it from this side, you can't quite see but uh, there's a lot of greeneries in there, that's why you can't see the algae but there's a lot of algae and then you can see the baby snails uh, roaming around, probably eating all the algae on the wall. And I'd say some of the benefits to growing these snails if you have a tank filled with algae is that these guys will honestly get rid of the algae in your tank within a couple of hours to a couple of days. So I'd say if you have a 10 gallon filled with algae, put a couple of these guys in there and you'll see a huge difference in just a couple of days. But for me, uh, I never had an algae issue in my tanks, so I never had you know like the reason to grow any like fishes or snails or anything like that for example like I guess you know the quarries or you know uh, what's the algae eater you know bottom feeding algae eaters because of an algae issue because I never had an algae issue but um, the reason that I am breeding these guys is because uh, you know these guys provide more like I guess more activities in the tank and they kind of help with the greeneries and I will to be honest tell you guys guys the real purpose in another video because I do have another video coming for you guys but yeah as you can see over there there are the small snails that are growing uh, I guess those are about two weeks old uh, so for these guys to grow they do actually take some time um, they are very slow growing and slow moving creatures so it'll require a lot of patience so let's go into like some of the things that you need into um, breeding this tank, uh, breeding the, these snails. So um, they don't require a lot of food or requirements in the tank. All you need is a fish tank with just water in there and some algae. However, uh, the best source of food for these guys are indeed algae. So if you have a tank that's filled with algae, it's honestly, that's the best source of food for these guys. And that's actually reason why I'm growing these algae on my, in, inside of my tank. Let me just adjust this real quick for you. So yeah, so uh, I'm actually growing algae in this tank on purpose so that these guys have something to eat and something to like munch on. And this is like the fastest way to grow them. Um, so food wise, uh, I guess I could introduce you guys what I actually, you know, feed them for now. So right here. Other than algae, I have this algae wafer that I bought from PetSmart. Petco actually. But it doesn't make a difference. So this I think costs about like $5 or $6 in California, LA where I live. So this is a really good source of algae for, you know, bottom feeders usually as you can see in the picture. However, you know, they do provide some good source of algae for like the small um, like snails and other creatures that roam around uh, to eat algae. So as you can see, I put a pellet down there and it's actually, you know, making its way to the pellet. And in about like an hour or two, all of these adult uh, snails that you see will make its way down here to eat the algae wafer. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to show you guys, but that's you know a really good source to source of food to provide if you don't exactly have a f fish tank full of algae, but you want to breed them, right? So uh, let's now since we got into the the source of food that they eat, let's talk about what happens and how they actually breed. So these guys um, mate by like I don't exactly know the process, but they get together mingle a little bit and then they do some action and what they do is they go around the tank and lay these little tiny eggs as you can see so I actually have a silicone a side of silicone filled with these little tiny eggs and these are not exactly like other bugs or anything to be concerned of but uh, the snail eggs so they look like this I can't exactly show you 
Tua with this lens that I have on. But this is what it would look like. Look like a little jelly and then it hardens. And then from there, you'll see these little tiny snails. I don't know if I'll be able to show you, but very tiny. They're very tiny when they uh, get removed from this bunch. And they will look something like that. A little tiny dot. And then they grow up to be that size. And then about like that size in the back over there. And for these little jelly-like egg bunch to hatch, takes about a week or two, about 10 days approximately. So this is already hatching, you can see how it's like all spread out. But this one, I can't exactly show you too well. That one isn't, sorry guys. But anyway, so that's what the eggs look like. And uh, once they hatch, they roam around, eat these algaes on this glass as you can see, and they grow from there. Um, as you can see, this 20 gallon tank, I have it sectioned off like this only because I didn't want the fishes on this side to eat my snails. And I actually did have like a crayfish and whatnot and baby crayfishes in this side, on this side. And as you can see, I have, I have three in here. I'm just growing them just so that they can like eat all the waste and whatnot. So, um, so this tank actually remains clean. But anyway. So I just have it sectioned off like this, and on this side there are all the plastic plants that I used to keep with my crayfish and whatnot. And then back there I have a, I'm breeding baby guppies right now, and when they're up to like a certain size, about half an inch, can't exactly focus, I'm gonna move them to the 75 gallon tank that I have prepared. As you can see this tank is actually empty, it doesn't have any like fishes or anything, because I removed all the crayfishes, and you know the other larger guppies. So I'm currently focusing on breeding these guys, these ram's horn snails. And these guys are actually very helpful. Uh, and I will tell you guys the true purpose of why I'm breeding these guys in another video because it's actually very interesting. So yeah, so for in terms of breeding these guys, you know the food wise, all you need is basically algae. If you don't have enough algae, buy one of these pellets from like Petco, algae wafers. And once they, you know, mate and they produce eggs, they're gonna put it on your uh, silicone side of the silicone right there like that, just like you see on the screen. And then it takes about 10 days for them to hatch. And once they hatch, they'll just roam around the tank eating all the algae and grow up like that. And when they grow, they become about like this size. And then they get larger from there. And these guys are really, really good friends to have in your fish tank. I definitely don't have it with any like crayfishes uh, because I'll tell you in another video but they're very helpful and they look uh, you know quite calm and they're very good friends to other you know fishes and whatnot they don't exactly produce too much waste as you can see however there are some like waste produced by these guys but it's not too harmful and these waste actually they uh, they help a lot with the plants that I'm going to keep so they do actually do a lot of good for your tank rather than bad they're basically the cleaners of the of the tank. So yeah, so that's about it. So you don't need actually a lot of um a lot of information and requirement for these guys. All you need is just a tank with some water and some algaes in there. And these guys are actually very easy to breed. Um, all you require is I think three or four you know ram's horn snails from like a store. Just buy it. I think it's about two to three dollars each. I don't know how how much they cost, but it should be anywhere from like like two dollars to about four dollars each so buy about like a pair or two and then put them in in the tank and they'll start breeding and that's how you breed rams or snails all right thank you so much for watching and if you guys have any questions regarding these guys at all so let me know down in the comment and i'll do another video if i need to thank you so much and i'll see you guys in another video bye bye